of the main plot points of this episode is, well, Lex nearly dies in a car accident and Clark saves him. I thought it was a very interesting dynamic and it seems like going forward, it's like they're going to become friends and then it's going to slowly fall apart. Don't spoil it for me, but I think that's where it's going to go. But Jake, what say you? I really think that, you know, you know, like my one of my favorite things I put on here of what I liked about it was Clark saving Lex. You know, like, for instance, like, you know, Lex goes, because that's a car stunt that, you know, I believe Michael Rosman has talked about it in interviews, that they shot in a tank, and, like, Michael Rosman was actually underwater in a scuba gear. They had a scuba team, and so Tom had to swim down there, and that's a real thing. He was actually just literally in, with a microphone here where he had to do this, make sure he was breathing. And I think that is really intense. Like, you know, it shows that, you know, the, how their, their story begins is that how he, Clark, saves him, does what, you know, because that's what a Superman thing to do is save people. And, you know, he could and he could just let him die, but he doesn't. And I just think that that right there, you know, and that, that stunt, by the way, that car stunt was so good. How it just it looks like a real person that he hits the stunt, man, and they both go in the water. I'm just like, that is so cool. It doesn't look fake or computerized. I'm like, that just what I thought was really great. And I really think that that really, you know, I think he that, that like and he's appreciative. But can we also talk about that scene? where once he saves Lex, like, you know, the, the dad just looks with disgust that, you know, like he almost, it's almost like he was mad at Clark for saving Lex's life, you know, way, because he's like, he said, who was the maniac driving? Cause that'd be me, Lex Luthor. And then he just realized like, Oh my God, like Clark, this, you know, and it's not Clark's fault, but like, it's like, cause Lionel has history with Lionel, with his father. So that kind of, you know, he, he does not like the Luthers in the slightest bit. And so that's, I really like that aspect that he looks at Lex and he says the funniest thing he goes, is there anything I can do for you? He goes, drive safer or whatever. He said, drive safer. <laughs> he, he said, drive slower. He told him to drive slower in that <laughs> scene. I mean, you already know that he's a little bit disgusted because he's the son of Lionel Luther. He knows he has history with them. And throughout, and, and once we get into the episode where he, when um, Clark gets the truck from Lex as a parting gift to in his own de- in his own depth and, Jonathan tells him that he cannot have that truck because why? Because you don't just because you save your life doesn't mean you earn a prize because yeah. just because they give you something to give doesn't mean you'll get doesn't uh, without giving uh the fuck, sorry about that um can't talk normal but anyway like just because they'll give you something for a gift doesn't mean they'll expect something in return because they'll expect something in return you expect them to pay them back and there's one scene that was in the extended version of the pilot that was cut out of the, the original version of the episode where he's given them a, a, of an example of what happened to other people affected by the Luthors. Like one of his neighbors were, were, were getting offered by Lionel and they send them flashy gifts and they try to, uh, and they try to hold up to the end of their bar- bargain. And when they didn't, he had the whole, he had their, um the family evicted. So he's blaming a uh, blaming Lex for what his father had done. He's blaming and he's the trying to let him the sins of the son. Yeah. He's punishing the sins of the father, the father. And he's trying to let him know where the money came from that bought that truck. And that was just a great scene. And I was really pissed that they cut that part out because you can't even find that extended episode unless you own a DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah. And it's interesting you point that out, Matt, because, you know, Jonathan Kent starts to hate Lex Luthor long before Clark does. And the traditional, like, it's like water is wet, fire is hot, and Lex Luthor and Superman hate each other. It's just, it's just the thing that just happens. But in this show, it's like they're going to start as friends, and then I feel like that's just going to erode. But Jonathan Kent has always had that underlying little, yeah, the Luthor name is just like, the Luthor name is mud to Jonathan Kent. And so I feel like that's going to be really interesting to what they explore there. will be able to praise Michael Rosenbaum enough because I mean he's just like you talked about Matt he's fantastic in this role and I've heard some people say he's the best Lex Luthor I hadn't seen him up to this point with all due respect to Gene Hackman I'm definitely leaning towards yeah Michael Rosenbaum really he's got it figured out he got it figured out early He's such a complex and they made him more of a human character, more grounded instead of just making it a silly, campy version of Lex Luthor that we've seen before. And that was interesting that they wanted to add more of the friendship development between Clark and Lex. And I thought it was such a rich way to to do it's something that's never been done before in any of the iterations of Superman. I agree, Matt. Like he really just wants he there's three things he wants. He wants to have 
by Clark. He wants to have a best friend. He wants to be loved, you know, because his father doesn't love him. His father looks at him like a disappointment. And the only way he gets love, affection is by, his, by just one-upping his father because he's like, that's the only affection I will get from you is hate. At least I will get something from you. And it's like, while well, Clark, you look at nature versus nurture, and mm -hmm. nature and nurture is Clark and Jonathan. Nature is just Lex and Lionel, where they're just constantly butting heads with each other. And all and it just it sees that Clark Lex just wants his father to tell him, I love you, son, and hug him. But his father will never do that because he just sees him like, you know, just a, like a stain on a shoe, you know. And I think that's why Lex has to be this person. It's like, I have to be, my father taught me to be always take what's mine. Be what, yeah. be the character he's all about take what he wants. He's all about survival. And that's what why he's been so hard on him with, with all this childhood. Like his childhood has been stripped away from, from the moment that he was born. Like his father had bad influences on him. Like he want he always want what, what Clark has. And he does not have that kind of life. He doesn't have to have a family that loves him and cares for him like Clark has. I thought I thought it was rather odd that the school gifted him a sauna for 20 years of service. I'm like, how did that arrangement work out? It's like most people get a gold watch. I, I think this man got I think a that sauna. I, yeah, yeah. And I but I bet it might have been because he mentioned that some of the people that he knows that they he used to coach, they, they used to be in football players, part of the team of Smallville. I mean, yeah, that I mean, I suppose that makes sense. It just Weird 20 year anniversary gift, Jake. You, what what do you think? You think that's weird getting a sauna? Well, I mean, yeah, especially like it seems like, okay, well, and also it's like, hey, meteor, which I want to point something out, okay? Uh, this is something that I we did not acknowledge yet. Lon, Lana's wearing, by the way, the necklace of the meteorite that killed her parents. <laughs> so. I'm like, imagine if your family, get, if your father gets shot and killed by a bullet and you're wearing the bullet that killed your father. I'm like, that would be a little bit messed up. That's the thing. Like, I was like, yeah, that bothered me a lot. Like, why would you want to wear that as a reminder that you lost your parents were killed? Like, I wouldn't wear that. <laughs> that's just, that's just like horrible, bad luck, to be it's honest. It's like with that you. scene in Zoolander where he has a statue made of his friends with a gasoline, where it's like, <laughs> Hey, they killed each other. They killed themselves with gasoline fight. So I made a statue to honor that scene that killed them. <laughs> I made a statue to honor that fight. <laughs> I'm just like, it just makes you think, Lana, that meteor killed your parents. You go she's a, a, she's a, a messed up. Thing. She's a messed up kid. Clark gets x-ray vision in this and immediately spies on the women's <laughs> in the women's room. He, spied, sorry, he saw Lex first before he spied on the women's locker room too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, but yeah, that was before. And especially because now we're starting to see Clark developing his x-ray vision. His powers are slowly manifesting because he hasn't manifest all of his abilities and you will see more of it as the show progresses. But this was interesting to see him struggling not controlling the flashes of his x-ray vision and then in the second time when he did it when he was doing uh, climbing the rope in the gym class <laughs> falls over and then loses control of his x-ray and it happens to be in the girls locker room that lana lane is in that was hilarious the the the, the last scene the last shot of clark smirking giving that little smile seeing lana being naked that was sort of improvised because he was laughing because of what the director told him to do and he was cr and the way he was describing it it cracked him up and that was and that wasn't supposed. He was not supposed to get a smirk, but they left that shot in the episode. They thought it was great. Called cool. This is a rather chilling episode. Obnoxious athlete Sean. This episode Kelton. leaves me cold. I like to chill, chill. We're not sending me to the cool. Stay cool, bird boy. Cool party. Gentlemen, can I please read the synopsis? Thank Sorry, you. go on. <laughs> Obnoxious athlete Sean Kelvin drowns in an icy, meteor rock infested lake because crypt kryptonite just exists everywhere in this poor town and is resurrected with an intense need for body heat. He freezes his old girlfriend to death and sets his sights on Chloe. So, uh, yeah. If you piss on kryptonite, you will become like made of piss. And then you'll be like, piss man, because that's how, that's how kryptonite works. You know, you know, people grab meteorites. If they swallow it, you'll just become like, you know, you'll become absorbus 
If you piss on it, you'll become pisser. If you t- if you go into an ice water, or if you go into a hot bath, you'll become the heat miser for whatever reason. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. You know? That should be that should be your pitch for the another freak of the week episode. If the Smallville was still running, that should be another pitch. The pisser, for real. the pisser, the pisser man. So the main thread throughout this episode is basically Lex going to Cassandra and like, yeah, what is my destiny? Basically, like, are you really a psychic or are you just playing? And it's kind of teased and teased and teased, and then literally in like the last 10 minutes goes to see her touches his hand and it gets into this amazing flashback or amazing vision in which we see lex as president luther which to my knowledge was a storyline in the superman comics and then he walks out into the rose garden and then it turns into a whole thing of sunflowers he touches one sunflower with a black gloved hand he touches it and all the sunflowers die and then you see bones and skeletons everywhere. And then he looks up and it's about to rain, but it rains down blood. And he is wearing a pure white suit. And then he snaps out of the vision. Sandra dies and he rushes out and he like clutches his chest like he's just having like a heart attack or something. I was not prepared for how dark this episode would get. I really was not prepared. And it's I think it's my favorite thing of this show so far it's so dark but it really goes to show that basically lex luther was born on a bad choice road and there is no there is no exit ramp from that it's scary stuff but it's also just brilliant stuff Uh, who wants to go first i i will say that it oh my god it's that i like that scene so much where it's just like you know it's I keep thinking like there was something that I was like thinking like wait a minute didn't this ha-? and I'm like oh wait that's later on I'm like no. there's something that that scene is a great scene you know we might see later on a, in a couple of seasons from now an extended version of that scene but it like literally this scene was so great to see Lex Luthor like has show how he is like you know that without Superman you know without people like he he will destroy this world because. You know, he is Superman's greatest enemy. He is the he is the world. Like Superman is the man of steel. Lex Luthor wanted to be the man of tomorrow. He's not he won't be since Superman's the man of tomorrow. He will be they said, Well, if I can't be the city, if I the city, the world cannot love me, then I will just take the world away from me. I will kill every single man, woman, and child on this planet because that is my that is, you know, that will make me the happiest is just bring in misery to others, you know. It kind of reminded me of when Zod has Superman in Man of Steel have that vision and then soon Superman slowly descend into the whole like sea of skulls and bones. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit, obviously not to the budget of what is of what that movie was, but eerily very similar. And I don't know if I'm too out of bounds on that comparison, but that's what my mind flashed to. Matt, what did you think? Yeah, the scene when they went into that dark direction showing you who Lex will become th- that man because when Cassandra saw Clark she saw the light in him she saw him as the savior of the world while he she saw Lex as the evil the destroyer of worlds and like like a quote from Oppenheimer now I am become death the destroyer of worlds everything he touches they perish So the picture I'm going to be using to describe this plot, I'm going to keep up for a little bit just for the viewer at home or the listener, if you're listening on Spotify, because, well, quite simply, the villain of the week is played by Amy Adams before she was famous, before Enchanted, before The Fighter, before Arrival, and before she was Lois Lane in the DCEU, she was a villain in Smallville. It truly is a small world. And when I saw her face in like the first shot i was like wait there is no way and sure enough amy adams is in here it's so crazy considering she'd be lois lane in the dcu and she started out in a superman tv show and this was like years before i knew her as doing that one episode of the office and before all of that where she was the purse girl 
I saw her and there's a direct to video movie called Cruel Intentions 2. And she yeah. literally like played like the sister, like the Sarah Michelle Gell like role role in that movie. And she's actually not bad. She's actually really, really good in that movie. You know, and I actually like her in that. I'm like, you know, so that's where I first was introduced to her because I used to be an FX junkie, you know, on that which the FX the TV channel, you know, on cable. But yeah, with, but I used to be a fan of that channel, so I would see her on that movie come on all the freaking time. And so I think to see her and then Smallville, I'm like, hey, that's the girl from the Cruel Intentions too. And then she got Enchanted and The Office and, you know, American Hustle. And, you know, now she's like a huge Oscar winning actress. And, you know, this is actually a really, she's really great in this episode, you know, because it shows that she was also in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Really? I had no idea. Yeah. She actually has not won an Oscar yet, as far as I'm aware, which is just a, it's a shame because she's been awesome. Things like American Hustle and Arrival, especially. Or she. Well, then what the fuck do I know, right? She crushed it. Page <laughs> Tale, when they're just, when the parents are out, the kids throw a party, it's a small gathering. And then later you find out that there's a, hundreds of people entering your place and it gets a little out of control. Yeah, in the uh, in the words of Candace from Phineas and Ferb, it's not a party; it's an intimate get together. Candace party. Candace. That Lex party. Luthor shows up at a grown. Oh man yeah, and he's like, "Don't worry." Party. And he set up. He set. He set up the fireworks. And he's like, "Don't oh, don't worry about the police. I got that taken care of." Dude, you're at a high school party with underage drinking. Funny though, the party at the party whenever like he cleans up and the parents are there. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they had a plunge, They have a toilet plunger for the toilet because it was <laughs> overfloated. <laughs> And, and they said, like, the fact is that they had a, a phone call and that they said five different people answered. Not neither one of them had any clue who you were. It was just funny that they that Jonathan just gave the, a round of applause. Like, we were already here <laughs> before you even came to the door. Okay, there's logic behind that that makes no sense. He has super speed and he went and cleaned the whole house, but yet he didn't go upstairs and he or he didn't look just once and see his parents. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't just. He didn't even bother to go up to the bathroom when the people were using the toilet, which was off limits. Yeah, it's a. It's it. And in the cliche is that he fixes everything, makes it all right, and they come home and like we're home, and it's like it's like yeah, it's one of the they, cliche parents where yeah, you're caught, you're busted. But yeah, I just did not like this cop. And when he shows up at like the Kent farm after the arrest and he's like, well, after you dropped a safe on my car, you didn't give me a lot of options. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I he went all, oh, he went all Nick Cage on him. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, this dude could kill you. I'm like, the cop's like, dude, like, are you really going to try to intimidate? Like, are you really dude, trying to threaten him? Well, oh yeah, God. but then he he got leverage over his own dad, and that's his biggest weakness. Then that's why he's not willing to go push, even though he pushes his buttons a lot, and he's close to killing him, and he wanted to kill him. But he's like, you kill me, your dad goes to jail forever. Yeah, you're screwed. But yeah, also, the one thing that always, one thing that bothered me, like, how if even if you try to expose him and tell everybody about him, how are you going to prove that he has superpowers? How Drop are you going to prove safe on him like he did before? Uh, yeah, you might as well just drop something. Yeah, he dropped an engine on top of him just to test if, if that if that's the same guy who stopped the bus. By the way, what if he would have been wrong? You know, that's he would have found, found he would have found an excuse like, hey, he, he got the engine Don't fell care, on him by accident. Dad. On to the next farm. He he probably would have made it look like an accident and cover his tracks. And also, <laughs> you're going to be wet too, and the way that he was using his invisibility. He, he, yeah, with, with kryptonite like Wait, invisibility, no, what, 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 wasn't it like a like a paint or a plant or something that he had to like, yeah, doze all over? Yeah. All the goo. Yeah, it would have. He would have seen parts of his skin, Sorry. and he would have been and he would have been naked. He's like, oh, Don't that, look that's at me. that that's that's even creepier when you put it like that. <laughs> I mean, Stop it's a naked man with paint on his face. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, if we talk about invisible people, we're just gonna be here all night long. But uh and make we'll jokes talk, about it. That is for sure. But we'll talk more about that in a second. So anyway, she's taking a bath, okay? She's taking a bath, and then an invisible person holds her under. And as to Ron, Matt was saying, he has ink on his hands, and yet he's still invisible when he's holding someone underwater. That's a good point. Like, how is he not like 
bring up his hands from the water and he's just how's like, his skin not showing or when or when he gets splashed in his face and parts of his face get shown it was like it does have a like you said before this is like a little bit of a haunted mansion poltergeist but it's also a little bit more of a hollow man movie vibe if you know the movie with kevin bacon where he turns invisible and becomes experiments and becomes a psycho killer that scene right. reminded me of it yeah but with invisible man movies like the original with claude rains or hollow man or the most recent invisible man movie we got in 2020 there's at least a reason why when we don't see them invisible, there's a reason like they're covering up. Like there was a suit in the 2021. Claude Rains has the iconic outfit where he's covered up in the bandages and the glasses. But like, what's this dude's excuse is like the paint, which if even like just a simple drop of rain could like ruin this dude's entire scheme. It was like a Florida rainstorm that lasts 15 minutes because we've been having those in the state of Florida recently is like, Rains for 15 minutes, he's completely visible again. He's like, oh, well, uh, my my plan's foiled. Time to go to Amazon and order more paint. And like, what? You did now, not think- Then that would mean, then that would mean the episode is over. If it's, it, it's already been sh- revealed. And he sweats too much. He's His plan's Yeah, gone. the sweat. <laughs> Even when you sweat, you would still show your skin because you're was covered in, in ink. A locker room. Yeah, he was in a steam full of freaking steam. (laughs) With lots of moisture. He was in there, and yet all you see is a shadow because I'm like, how the fuck is that logical? (laughs) Go into the question that I had for you guys as soon as this episode was over. Do you think that Lex was really bewitched by Rickman? Or do you think that he was really like he has a suspicion about Clark this early into the show because we never see the fact that Lex and Rickman shake hands. We don't see it. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling, and this, and again, I have not seen the whole show, so y'all watching or listening at home, keep this in mind. I have not seen the show. I don't know what happens. I feel like 11 episodes deep, I have a feeling that Lex knows that Clark is not who he says he is, And I feel like he used the bewitching as a bit of a disguise to kind of see how Clark would react to the situation. Again, I could be totally wrong, and I more than likely am, but when that episode ended, I was like, Lex stayed as far away from Rickman as humanly possible. He even said in one scene, please don't touch me. But then, as before it goes to commercial, like Rickman sticks his hand out, and Lex is just looking at it and looking at him and looking at that, and we don't see anything. But then the next thing you know, he's going after Clark and Tippett, and he's like, I don't know, I know you're keeping secrets from me, Clark, and he's like waving a gun around, and I'm just like, he doesn't know the whole story, but he's got some kernels of, he's found some kernels of the truth. I like so, how he's like, Clark, you have some explaining to the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good, but I feel like I feel like Lex knows a lot more than he's letting on, which, I mean, is Lex's modus operandi at this point. He knows more than he lets on. But I feel like at this point, he either knows Clark is not of this world or has an idea of that. Again, I could be totally wrong, but that's my theory. You want us to ask, like, are you trying to ask us? Do you want us to tell you, like, was he possessed or not? Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that in a vacuum, I think that in this episode, I don't think he was possessed. I feel like he was poking the bear a little bit to see what you don't would think happen. Lex was, he was saying when he did this, Clark, you have some explaining to do. <laughs> like, you know think that's <laughs> sane, Lex? If you really, I'm just saying, do you really think that that Lex is sane for him to do? I, I don't think he would talk like that. But also, you're not that far off. But at the same time, I do believe he was bewitched and he made an exception to shake his hand. It's because he knows he was dropping with the cans of buying off the farm. He's like do, making his peace with my like, leaving Smallville for good. I'm like, OK, I'll make an exception and shake your hand, even though they never they, they did it off screen. But I think for different with Lex, he's not coming off like mind control, like a robot, because I think that there's something a part of Lex that's bringing out the darkness that's already been in him all along. And he always had a suspicions for Clark from day one. And I think that the, the bewitches helped amplify all that. At least that's my, my theory, but I do believe he was bewitched. Also, there's a lot of to kill a mockingbird references in this freaking story. No, I just came out of the episode thinking to myself, you can't convince me that Lex this early on in the show 
would be so dumb as to shake this dude's hand as like someone who is just like really smart and coming up to this point is he either knew what he was doing and shook the hand willingly or he just was like i'm not going to but i'm not going to tell clark that i didn't and i feel like he was on a bit of a fact-finding mission because it was in a bit of a throwaway note we kind of see in i believe it was shimmer he was using nixon to to dig into the accident because it, it it was established previously, but Nixon came back with his sources. And I feel like that's the next episode. It's in this crop of episodes. I know that. Yeah, but I think that he, if, even if he wasn't bewitched, I don't, it, or mind control, wherever you want to call it, I don't think that he would use a freaking using machine gun to shoot the hell out of Clark to test it out. I don't think he would be willing to risk his life if he was wrong about his him. His signature weapon's a pistol. I mean, that's a... Yeah, that's his pistol. That Like, he would not use a freaking machine gun. Like, I, that's I that's that not Lex's thing. Him, like, like, that would be so out of character for him. Like, the he... Because you can see how much it does foreshadow his darkness, but even though he goes a little bit over the top when he shoots the crap out of Clark, and you see a bullet time visual effects and him dodging it, doing it all Matrix style <laughs> on him... Yeah, so I'm going to say that, no, he was definitely mind-controlled. Because his weapon is always his pistol. His 9 millimeter pistol. Yeah. Do you know what they should have called this episode, Ryan? What? To kill a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Matt says that Matt says that Lex was bewitched. Jacob, uh, what say you? Was Lex bewitched, yes or no? I put in my notes that yeah, he was bewitched. He was? Yeah. All right, I guess I'll be the lone guy. I don't believe that he was because there's no way that this Lex Luthor who has been presented up to this point as cunning, smart, and three steps ahead of everyone else say, you know what, let's see what happens. You really think that he was this crazy? Like he's just like, oh, so I'm sorry yesterday, Clark, that I shot you with a fucking machine gun. Oh, and I'm sorry about to blow you up in your in that car with you and Kyle. Like he was going to blow them up into oblivion. I looked like I was drunk as fuck doing it too. I was like, hey, Clark, you have some explaining to do. You have some explaining to do. He's, he's been researching Clark and the Ken family this entire season. I'm so, not so, saying. I, I'm just saying it's possible. It's possible. You possible. had you, you were there, but I just think like there's some parts of it, but I don't think you would be willing to risk Clark's life to test out what he's made of. I think he would be willing to risk his life he because what, because in been his been mind been. what if he's wrong about it what if he's wrong and he's actually normal and you just killed him <laughs> he's that's, a, that's an extreme way to kill somebody to, to figure out a real point like i just killed him I'm i was like, like oops <laughs> also i just feel like also like you know like also like like matt said he would have used a pistol if really if he was gonna like kill clark because that's a machine gun just that's like weird that's like not a thing for legs never once had said you know what I don't even know where the fuck he got a machine gun from. I'm sure, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure he went to the gun store and fucking got a machine gun <laughs> and gave it to Lex. I mean, Lex would always carry a gun in public. A pistol. I'm like, and Ryan's the one out here spouting bullshit. They're like, oh, I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, it was. Uh, yeah, I think Lex knew he's just keeping the secret. Like, yeah, I shot Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Clark. I shot you. I'm sorry. I'm about. To, I was about All to right. blow you. I was. Close to blowing you guys off. So, so, are you an alien, Clark? In the next episode, he's like, "Hey, are you an alien? I know I shot you like fifteen times and tried to blow you up, but I'm going to ask this question anyway because you know the writers in this episode don't know." About the I'm just, I'm just saying. In the next episode, he uses Nixon to investigate the car crash, and then at the end of the episode, is like, "Yep, I, well, I was wrong." So, I'm just saying there is precedent to believe that Lex had at least an idea that Clark was not who he said he was and he saw that as a test but i will i that's the hill i will die on this week last week it was rogue this is the hill i die on this week yeah, but I, I pass it I, off ryan, I, do we pass it off ryan's bullshit full of shit I'll be, I, ryan, you gotta do bullshit alert you gotta do bullshit alert ryan's full of shit you gotta put that now you have to ryan's full of shit alert i, I fine i'll fine i'll own that but uh, I pass it off to all of you watching slash listening. Am, am I full of shit? But uh... <laughs> and the boom box, the boom box sent me. I, I was just.
I was done when I saw that that boom box. I was like, this is the year of our Lord 2002 this was released. First of all, like, what year does this guy think it is? And second of all, the black trench coat. The black trench coat. Tell me you've just seen The Matrix for the first time without telling me you've just seen The Matrix for the first how much, time. How much is your close cost in The Matrix? <laughs> 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 I know the reference, that reference is from uh, Grandma's Boy. Grandma's Boy is from Grandma's Boy. Wow, JP, that is a great outfit. How much do clothes cost in the Matrix? Hey, hey Samantha, hey, Samantha, don't take the red pill. Hey, JP, I wonder how much clothes cost in the Matrix. I am JP. He talks like a robot. I am JP. I hate your face. <laughs> oh, 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 also, I also love how he uh, literally hypes how he brings a boom box literally a boom box and sets it right there like as if like he i was thinking about batman 89 when like the joker has an instrument with a boom box it's the sole purpose is to yeah. carry a boom box he just thinks he's cool he thinks he's all big and bad because he has all the clark's powers now and yeah the trench cord was a little bit too matrixy a little bit of far oh. stretch for, for him to wear it Ryan, put the song lonely island boom box into like a, as a clip when you re when you're referencing boombox. But then I walk in the room, hold my boombox high, and what happened next will blow your mind. I will try and find it, and I will do it for you. Don't say it, and don't on for you. Episode he joins who I am going to call the bro gang because. They say bro a lot, and they are annoying. I did not like this episode. Jacob, you go first. This was a dumb episode. I don't really like it at all. Like, I was literally like, honestly, when I do rewatches of Smallville, I usually skip this episode. <laughs> yeah, like, there's a lot. There's like two episodes in season one I really skipped. And like I said, you know, these are two episodes I usually skip in season one. Because I'm like, it's just, it's the, and also, they redo the same freaking plot in season two or three with a baseball gang instead. It's like, it's that stupid. It's like, this is not that fascinating. I really don't care about this. I'm like, and also they give Whitney, like, wouldn't Pete be the one that you give this more of a story to, Pete? Because Pete is at least, it, like, Pete has more of a connection to Clark than Whitney. Whitney's just like, hey, this asshole bully is, I'm going to have to help him get out of a, a stinky situation. And it's just like, and also, by the way, I, I, I do like, there are parts of the opening I do like, but one thing I do not like is, how they break into the safe they're like oh i used to bang this maid at lex's mansion man and you know that's how she figured i'm like first off how would you know how the maid how does the maid know what billionaire lets a maid into the safe what billionaire does that i'm just sitting there going that makes no freaking sense logically at all i mean like safe, so safes have got to be clean so i mean maybe she was let in to clean it I mean, they're, it's not too far out of bounds, I suppose. Yeah, they can face through fucking walls, and, and they can get in and out. Personally, they Lex, like I said before in the last episode, they he has the worst security guards ever. That and is it undisputed. Was so, it was so stupid, especially when he was about to make the drop and try to make the trade of that disc that they're blackmailing him in to get in to, for, from the for the million dollars that they're that they're trying to pull, and he comes alone. And that really bothered me. Like, why would you come alone? Why didn't you just grab your men and fucking take their asses out? They're just a bunch of goons, of bandits. They're like the fucking wet bandits from Home Alone. Like, come on. They're like, dude bros, too. They're like the dude bros. Like, bro, we got yeah, this, bro. bro. Dude. Well, that, well, well, that's the reason why they, they went and got bro. Whitney. Because he's one of the football jock that they can easily, like, like manipulate because he lost his scholarship and he's got nothing to lose he's working at his father's store he lost because he lost his scholarship now he feels like he's got nothing to lose and they thought and they wanted to use him for his weakness and use a fresh guy for the job you know what really makes me mad about this episode is that the whitney stuff could have been interesting because i've been very hot and cold on whitney on this show so far but i've always left the possibility open because of the stuff with his father, that that could be interesting going forward. It's like here he loses everything and his first instinct is to join the bro gang and get a tattoo. It just feels completely, I don't know why, it just feels completely immature. It just, it it didn't really gel with me. And then they like 
like get kryptonite lace tattoos, which I'm sure that that makes absolutely no sense. That farts in the general direction of logic. Then they get drunk and then they go through this tunnel and they're like, they're like, whoa, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And then they do this thing with the trucks where they're phasing through active trucks on the highway. What would have happened if Whitney got run over? They'd just be like, but, bro, but but the scene yeah, when he was bro. about to get run over by the truck, it feels like it could have taken him 20 seconds to move out of the way. Or it could have taken the truck, the, the driver to drive and turn the other way because there's no upcoming traffic on the left side of the lane. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just me nitpicking. But God, it, it was just a little bit ridiculous. But yeah, like you said, like, what if Whitney didn't face through? It's like, oh, God, you just pretty much committed murder. You know what would have happened if Whitney was killed? They would have took got a beer and poured one out for their homie. is like oh yeah you think money is gonna solve make everything go away he was so mad that i literally thought he was gonna punch lex out oh like, there's mo i thought that too because when i saw it like winding up john john was like a mix of really mad and really sad all at the same time and lex just walks over to him i'm like oh boy this is going to end with someone on the ground like like jonathan kent is connor mcgregor and lex luther is jose aldo if you know you oh. know Oh, you think that's how you solve everything, don't you, Lex? Just sprinkle a little money on it and hope the problem goes away. Well, obviously, some things are a little more difficult than that. Jonathan Kent's mad, but not to the point where he loses his composure. Uh, just like, this is just a goaded TV character right here. Like, he can balance the line of being really mad, but also not blowing his stack and just losing his mind. It, it's... It's excellent. And then he was he was able to restrain himself. Yeah. And then it's immediately followed up with. I didn't think it was possible to fall any further in your father's eyes. Obviously, I was wrong. He says he says literally, I'm going to go tell the sheriff. And he goes, and what's going to happen? And then they got tased or something. Why wouldn't that yell, help, help. He did and not even yell out help. Like, how did like why? What the hell's wrong with Lex? He did not try to yell out for help. Like if I if I were Lex, I would have been like that dude on the subway that meme the video from a couple of years ago. Please help! Police! Help! Help! Police! But no, and and the stun gun literally blows him back in conveniently into like the literally truck. just blows him right back like two feet away, like like that. That would not happen. That's a really powerful stun gun. That's the most powerful stun gun ever. I, yeah, that must have been a powerful fucking stun gun. <laughs> a taser gun. Which I've seen stun guns used on Deadliest Warrior. That is not how stun guns work. I don't think the writers did their research on that, or they just wanted to make it a little bit more dramatic. It's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> that's more like it. Like, Lex that, just... That's how it happened. When you get tased like that, like, oh, that's... <laughs> Lex, Lex just got Shoryuken pretty much. Shoryuken! Both Jonathan Kent and Lana Lang go off the reservation in this one. And Pete, and Pete Ross do as well. They go off the reservation quite a bit. Actually, with the scene, when he, when he was totally mouthing off to Lex and showing him how he really feels about him. You see, I don't like Lex Luthor. I don't like Lionel Luther, and I don't like your friendship with my son. In fact, if all of you Luthers were to dry up and die, I wouldn't shed a tear. Dad, yeah, that's enough. And then he, he was about to think of it, and he just burps right in front of him. Like, yeah, I was like, like that was a perfect moment that I just died of laughing. <laughs> I thought that was so stupid. He burps and legs just takes it. Just like, did it, and he just took it, and he just sat there and took it. <laughs> And, and we don't even get a rebuttal from Lex. I kind of cheered. I, I kind of for that moment that he, he did that to Lex. I kind of cheered him on, and then Pete was like, "Yeah, I'm glad he was. I cannot believe he dissed him." Yeah, and then it goes completely out the window when when Jonathan Kent's loan gets denied, and he gets on the phone. And he's like, "I am going to come down there, and I'm going to show you. Like, you're going to say no to my face." Yeah, listen to me. I have done nothing but give back to this community, and all anyone has ever done for me is screw me over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down there to that bank and you are going to have to turn my loan down right to my face. That way I can see whether you still have a pair or whether your wife keeps them in a drawer too. And then he goes there in his truck 
with a shotgun. Yeah, with a 12 gauge. Yeah, he goes off with a 20. I like to come down there and you to turn down that loan to my face. I've done nothing but giving back to this a community, and all you do is screw me over. Like he was like John Schneider's performance was absolutely outstanding. He criticizes that man's masculinity by saying, Does your wife keep your nuts in a drawer too? Oh, yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> Holy shit. He like he is not home. holding back for this one when he's under that like mind like that's that freaking spray, like poison thing that he's been exposed to. And then uh, and yeah, then he shoot, and then he shoots Clark with the shotgun. <laughs> Which literally, my jaw hit the floor when that. Oh happened. yeah. What like, if he wasn't? What if he? What if he wasn't? What if he didn't have powers? Oh my god. Would've this would have been himself. different. He would have been dead, dude. He would have sure. like inadvertently killed that guy. Killed his son. If that if he didn't have superpowers, he was so lucky. And there was another scene, and I know it's not part of Jonathan, but but with Pete talking to uh, Clark about the Luther family that screwed him out of the, the fact the cream corn factory. Which that was not brought up before until Pete had to open up and try to try to let like Clark know that Lex is bad news. Like I don't care if he was not the one responsible for my family getting screwed over, but I'm going to tell you he is a Luther and he is bad news and you shouldn't be hanging around with them. And then also, we get I, Lana. She gets sprayed by the flower, and oh boy, that whole thing. Oh boy, we see a lot of bizarre, sexy Lana that we have not seen before. She was not the goody two shoe. She gets a little bit feisty in this episode. And then the whole pool sequence, I was just, I'm she like, oh, God, like, I was like, come on, you're telling me you're not going to have a moment of fantasizing and coming true. And Clark was thinking the same thing. <laughs> and it he was said, so hilarious that she just dissed like f- freaking Whitney <laughs> and just just saying, yep, screw you. If you got you want to make excuses. We're done. <laughs> just dissed him right in front of the people in school, <laughs> like just like a boss. And and then By she way. literally like sees the next football player. She sees a like, hey Jimmy, and he's like to, to piss up to piss Whitney off on purpose. <laughs> that was awesome. That was priceless. Too, Did you see his new haircut? I'm like, look. Oh yeah, I no no he no he. I noticed his haircut, and that was in the last episode oh, yeah. of Zero. At the very, it was at the very end when she officially got the talent like officially open, and Whitney was there for like for like a short amount of time. I was kind of shocked about the hairstyle. I'm like, come on, I like long haired Whitney. I don't like short hair Whitney. I kind of like the short hair Whitney. I did not like, like the it long feels hair like Whitney. This is an evolution. Like, you know, the long hair Whitney. It, it's a character guy. growth. It's short character. Short hair Whitney is like, I'm a more mature. I'm me and Clark can be friends. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's definitely like more maturity look for Whitney, where now um, he's officially coming around and mature more and not becoming a douchebag. I also like how Lana pushes Clark into the pool and then she runs away and the principal gets Clark's attention. And then yeah, goes, he gets Saturday detention. He makes that blue steel look. He, from zero to blue steel, it like, hey, I'm like, where did this come from? Hey, hey, Chloe. He <laughs> just and like being like, all flirty and st- acting like a stud. I have to go get in a gasoline fight accident, and then I have to go kill Lex Luthor. Like, yeah. Earth to Chloe. <laughs> But I thought his, but I thought Sam Jones's performance was great when he was under another bizarre thing that we haven't seen Pete in. How furious he was, angry, and put tries to put the moves on Chloe. Then he gets rejected. Then he gets a little bit jealous of Clark. Then now he really wants to take Lex out because he knows he's a bad news, and he really just thinks he's part of the problem, and he's going to get into the way of their friendship. He put a gun, literally shot at Lex. He's a fucking shot horrible at- shot. I don't know. Was that meant to be a warning shot? And he shot like five times. How many rounds are in that fucking revolver gun? By the yeah, way, he, he would have ran out of bullets by now. And Clark Third. knocks him out. And Clark knocks him out. First, he does the deception of Lex. I knew you were lying to me. And then, like, take Lex out and then turns to Petey to, like, Pete, go to sleep. And like pats him on the head and beat. Yeah, he's he pats him on the head because he has super because he is incredibly strong and he can't he can't do the he can't do the the, the 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 real knockout that a lot of humans can do because he knows he could have killed them. <laughs> he would have been dead. So he had to do the fucking pat on the head. Yeah, but uh <laughs> the third act of this episode I thought was pretty <laughs> cool at the bowling alley, though. This man's chest should have just like caved it, in when it should have it should have gone through. Especially Clark was tossing it like a fucking like baseball, 
across the damn wall. The wall went through the concrete wall, dropped, like hit him right across the chest. That dude's dead. He just murdered him. Like, that, only, there's no way you'd be knocked out. He like throws a that. fucking pool ball, pool, a, a bowling ball, a bowling ball, ball, ball. Through the, and doesn't kill him. Oh, it's, it's like, like he's in fucking, fucking dodge. <laughs> it looked like he was in dodgeball, except with bowling ball. You could dodge a bowling ball, but you could dodge a ball. He threw a bowling ball at that guy's chest. That guy should be dead. I killed it could have gone. Dad, I, cool. I could have sworn it would have gone through the chest, especially with that amount of strength he has. Oh my god, he would. He he's dead. He killed him. I, So, Jacob, you are practically frothing at the mouth to talk about this episode. I'm about to end this man's whole career. So the This former... is a piece of shit episode, Ryan. This is a piece of shit. I was like, I hate this episode so fucking much. I'm like, I would rather watch, I would rather watch Cold than watch this episode again. Because I'm like, I hate the villain. Lex, the Lex and Lionel is the only storyline in this episode that I liked. If it wasn't for that, like, I honestly... And, the bad guy is not even the A plot. He's B plot. Like literally A plot is like some Lionel and stuff. And then B plot's the bad guy. Like there's like literally a chunk of the episode where the bad guy is not even in the episode till like the later half. And I'm like, where the fuck did the bad guy go? <laughs> like seriously, that pissed me off. Like honestly, I do have some likes though. I do have some like, even though this is a really, it's like a shit sandwich. I mean, it, it's bogged down by, uh, by fucking the, Reaper. The, the Rim Griefer, not the Grim Reaper, the Rim Griefer. Like, he's the off brand, non union, legally distinct Wes Bentley from Ghost Rider. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know what I said. I would have said he was a shitty version of Rogue from X Men, but then I'm like, well, technically, <laughs> Rogue absorbs too. their powers. Rogue absorbs their powers, so technically, that's not even true either. Uh, I, I did not like when uh, the fake Grim Reaper kills. A fucking dog. He kills oh, yeah. the old that lady pissed, and that a fucking That really dog. pissed me off. I got very sensitive about that I'm when like, it comes well, to killing, you, dude. murdering dogs. I am. Don't I have kill dogs, dogs of my own. Children. I mean, dogs are children is what I have an issue with. Yeah, they're the joyful creatures. Like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> Did you really have them kill, <laughs> incinerate the dog? You also, bastard. Martha confronts him too. Martha by him touching the vegetables. By the way, he's been using being so clever because he's like rogue from X Men. Yeah, he was. He was wearing gloves. gloves. He was wearing he gloves to keep it from it. happening. And then he starts touching people, and, and, it's like, like, and suddenly you... he just takes it off. Like, okay, don't worry, I'll get it for you. Like, dude, did you not? Did you forget to wear a fucking gloves that you were smart enough to do it the first time? I, I that really that scene really bothered me. It reminded me of the scene in Amazing Spider-Man when Peter first, like, you know, when he wakes up after he got bit by the spider in the subway. And then he starts messing up all the, you know, the bad guys on the subway. And he's like, I am so sorry. Oh, no. Boom. Oh, yeah, I remember oh. that scene. It just reminded me of that scene. And this, it's like, oh, he's just no, accidentally losing you. control of his oh. own strength. And he's sticking all over everywhere, sticking in the women's clothes. Like, <laughs> it's like for the physical com comedic timing <laughs> um, purpose. So this is also, it was so stupid how he kills himself at the end. He's like, "Oh no, I've been killing people. My mom's alive." It's been, it's, it's my pain. It's, it's been. Like, my, I've been trying to give what? them like, take away. I was like, my whole. I, I've been trying to take away their pain, but it's been my pain alone. I just wanted to be over. And he's like, "What the fuck are you trying to kill yourself? What, what kind of stupid shit is?" How do you take I mean, I don't shower? know. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe he. Wipe your ass? I don't know. Maybe my in my in his defense, maybe he <laughs> just wanted to off himself because he's not going to be able to live with that gift because he can't make physical contact with how, anyone. He how can't. Do how does the fake Grim Reaper wipe his ass this week on Unsolved Oh Mystery? my god. <laughs> now we're going there. <laughs> like, how did he... How does yeah, he wipe his ass? Good, yeah, that's a good how? question. How, how the fuck you does he are, wipe his own ass? You have to touch your body. It's impossible. For, for, for all we know, I don't think... You have a penis. I don't even think pee. he... I, I mean, I don't Why think do he does pee. I don't, I don't even think that fucker can pee or shit. Because one, like, Cork brought up one time where he x-rayed him. Seeing that he his heart doesn't beat, his heart's not beating. So he's a walking fucking corpse. You had to touch the gloves to put them on your fucking physical hands. How <laughs> did you? How did that? That makes no logical no, sense. It makes no logical sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. It's so. I feel like I'm crazy right now because it's like, how the fuck is this dude literally doing able to do this? You know, he reminds me of Death from Family Guy. Really. Yes. Remember the scene? I was like, imagine if he were to pick up like a chick or something. Like I imagine oh, I was like, yeah. he's gonna start dating Lana. 
It would have been like that scene in Family Guy where death, where he goes to like lose his virginity, and he goes, and you're in the car, and you're like, oh yeah, oh wait, are you alive? Wait, oh man, not again. She's dead, <laughs> and now I'm be a virgin forever. Oh yeah, <laughs> now I, no, now I remember. Since you brought that up, now it's starting to come back to me. Oh, Sandy. Oh, not again. I'm going to be a virgin forever. I thought that was pretty cool. How the that, just... that really scared the living piss out of that me from me that too. scene. Just imagine getting swarm of bees inside your bathroom. Like, God damn, that would be like your worst I nightmare. Because I have, because I have been like, and as a kid, it brought, me. yeah, it, I, it happened in me once, not, not, not the bathroom, but when I was, when I was a little kid, I was outside. I was messing around, but then the swarm of bees were fucking coming right at me, and I, I like that, that brought shit, me back bad. Me. That brought me back fucking bad memories. Not as bad as what Paul or the the fucking hot sh- what's her face got, got attacked. It's not like one of that type of level of attack. Yeah, like bees are not to ma- are nothing to mess with. I will give you that, but I don't think it's necessarily the biggest star of credibility when your villain Sasha has the same powers that Jupiter Jones had in Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> oh my god, that movie. I've never seen Jupiter Ascending, so I don't know. Unfortunately, I what? did when I was on fucking cable. Uh, Jacob, listen, Collin, I- Jacob Collins, I got two words for you. Watch Party on my channel, and Jacob Martin is going to be there too. All right, so this, all right, before, yes, okay, yes. Whitney's dad dies, okay, but yet yes. we saw him once in the show, okay? We saw Principal Quan multiple times. And yes, the, the symmetry is sad, but like we only see him once, once, and then he deserves a funeral. I'm like, literally, Lex's nanny, he had literally the same amount of screen time as Lex's nanny, and we didn't see her a funeral, you know? I'm just saying you mean, that. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I do agree that we should have had a little bit more screen time and one, like one-on-one exchanging dialogue between Whitney and his dad. That way it would have had more weight and more impactful. And it would have been emotional for us as audience when we see his death scene at the funeral, because we only, because we only get like at least one scene in the deathbed for only a short time. Then we see him being feeling a little bit better on the football field while Whitney was playing with the Metropolis sharks for a short time. That was cute, but we didn't get enough of the screen time with between him and Whitney to make us feel for that funeral. Like, scene. I didn't feel nothing. I'm like, well, if, if one of their cows dies, we're going to get a cow funeral too. I mean, it was a sad, I will say it's a sad scene, even though I wish they would have done more with Whitney's dad. That way it would have made, add more weight to the story. So, so Ryan, what? When one of their cow dies, are they going to have like the time after time play? And you see Clark crying and Jonathan crying as he's digging a, a cow's grave. And <laughs> first, oh, first of all, first of all, the two of you are cold, heartless bastards. And second of all, is like Whitney has been with this show since episode one. And ever since episode one, we've learned that his dad has had heart issues. Mm-hmm. So it's been a long term storytelling thing. So I don't know what's this whole thing. No, I do agree. No, I do agree. It caught me off guard. I'm not saying that the funeral, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that like, I wish we'd have had a little bit more development for the dad a little bit more. I get, I can only get where you're coming from. His dad didn't even appear when they were hostages. No. His dad did not even appear. Literally. I'm just like, where the fuck's his dad? It's just like, even at their own family store, his dad does not even show up. And I'm just like... He has a family, but we never see his family. Well, I thought it was a nice scene. I'll be the good guy. No, no, no. It is a nice scene. I'm not saying it's it a terrible a nice scene. scene. Like, but I agree with you on that one. It's literally, they could have had a horse funeral. It would have been just as good. But I'm just saying, the yeah. character they're having a funeral has no symmetry to what's going on. But at the end, we. Uh, but at the end, uh, the cop is like, like that case could have made my career. Now it's going to be your case. I'm going to solve your murder. I'm like, whoa, this escalated quickly. And then, I laugh when he said that. Did you that, like that? Like, Did you really dude. like that twist? His reasons of why he's been trying to stage the whole thing so that he uh, can make him out to be the hero. No, I, I thought I thought it was dumb. I was like, "That's not how comping works, my friend." It, like exactly, it's like yeah, you again. just all you do, her, all so you do is just get a like a get a like a because you incriminate yourself. I was I like, work. "You can't solve her murder." You know that, right? 
I worked for the police department in my in the city next to me for about six months, and I know that that is not how that works. You can't so. solve her murder, bro. That will incriminate you because you can't. Because there's even if you think you're leading them on a different trail, you're gonna lead them on the right trail because you know you know where A, B, and C is. So you can't really. You're gonna get back to A and B. You're an idiot. That guy. That guy's not that much of a mastermind. He's a it's, fucking deputy. Like, I'm like you're you not can't a detective. You ain't, dude. You ain't no fucking detective. You're not Sherlock Holmes. He even dude. dies like an idiot too. Oh yeah, it was so stupid. Did you see that Looney Tunes? He just death? pulls his gun out and he's like, yo, oh, and he just ah! dies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, and also, but the but the powers that Lana <laughs> possesses about the whole psychic connection between her and the cop, it broke the connection the moment that he, he died, shot in the face. and that when and the powers just disappears. So it's not permanent. I mean, you imagine though, whenever she's like, she saw him in the head. Oh, he getting shot in the face, and then he sees a CGI Looney Tunes bullet go right <laughs> to his head. It goes, <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's dead. And Brock Lesnar's got nothing to do with it. Oh, wait just a minute. Turn the don't... car on. Turn the car on. It has no <laughs> signal. Oh, or jump do. into a ditch. There are ditches right there. They say if there's a twister, you jump into a ditch. You know? Specifically, there's usually no like a drain of sewer no. ditch right there. You go inside the hole. Don't the do what I think you're going to do, show. I need answers, show. Come on. Oh, this is my favorite moment. He just super speeds into the twister. Oh, my God. <laughs> to be continued. Now, that's a cliffhanger. Are you serious? That's the ending? Yeah, that's the ending of this episode. <sighs> now you have to wait three months for the new season. I wonder if Clark got out of the twister. <laughs> By the way, Superman Returns, the tie-in game, has a has a the final boss. Oh yeah, battle. yeah. They definitely had that twister sequence too in the game. The Superman Returns the game. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Freaking twister. <laughs> what? Oh my god! This but that was an funny. epic ending of the cliffhanger. That like you don't know what's gonna happen once he super speeds and tries to save Lana into the twister. You got freaking Martha in the cellar. You got Jonathan going after Nixon. It's setting up high stakes. You got Lionel trapped under the beam. You got Lex having his crisis, and then Lana enters the tornado and and you let and Martha is like got in the beam of the flash of light of the ship, and you don't know what happens next. Imagine if the show would get I. Crazy. Oh, dude, I'm that would suck if that show got canceled. Because according to Tom Welling, because they weren't so sure that they were going to continue season two. Because they, they, they had like three weeks before the season starts, before they even get the go-ahead from, from the network. You guys were not kidding. That was no. <laughs> I mean, imagine watching it during its run. <laughs> 